This book is dedicated to Delia Arana in her honor of completing the 1,000 Books Before Kindergarten program, 2016. I'm Delia Arana. I'm four years old, and I read 2,000 books. I first learned to read when I was two years old. I would say I read three books a day or four or five. I can even read 10 books a day. My reading challenge is to read 10,000 books. Dinosaurs will once again live and thrive on this. On this planet. Yes. She'd been on the local news for her reading accomplishments, and we contacted her to the biggest, most beautiful library in the whole wide world. In January, I was invited to be a librarian for the day at the Library of Congress. Dr. Carla Hayden was so impressed, and we went in January, and she had the time of her life. I hopefully want to become a real librarian. I love to read in the library because it's more quiet and positive, so I can like think in my mind. I also like to read them here and in my sister's closet. I think it's my own private library. If I make my own library, then I'll be happy for the rest of the day. When I open a book, anything is possible. Reading takes me all around the world. Do you know what the word inspiring means? Yes. What does inspiring mean? Inspiring means like, like, oh my gosh, I can do that too. I'm Dalia, this is me, and these are my words. You don't have to tell her necessarily a fairy tale about a prince rescuing a princess. Sometimes the princess is able to rescue herself. We are back now with some Monday motivation. This little man right here, 11 year old Naeem Hudson, has traveled the world to encourage others to be confident. I'll speak to you in a moment. Well, let's let everybody know your story first. Here's a look. So my name is Naeem Hudson. I'm Here also known as King. And it's this kid teasing me because I have felines on. So, you know, I told the kid, it's not about what I have on my feet. It's about what I have inside my head. I became a motivational speaker to help people. Children, let me tell you this. You're capable of doing everything. You have to let your children express themselves. You have to let them talk. You have to let them make noise. And remember, if somebody doesn't know something, Help them. If you're dedicated to do something, do it today and do it right now. There's one young brother in particular. A few weeks ago, he was in Tanzania, Africa, speaking to young folks out there as a motivational speaker. Africa was amazing. Beautiful people out there. It was people with signs yelling my name. King Na, King Na. Little old me. I was in a newspaper. I'm still going through the same life as everybody else in the world because I'm not perfect. I'm the same as every child. All I do is just express myself. Wow. In a newspaper, now you're on Good Morning America. How did all this get started? Well, this really started from me dancing in the mirror and being goofy at a very young age. Mm -hmm. And You're my, still at a very young age, yes. just so you know, okay? All right, go ahead. I know. <laughs> I, it's a habit for me for saying that. But, it started off with me dancing in the mirror, being goofy, uh -huh. and then it escalated to motivational speaking. I never really wanted to, I never wanted to be a motivational speaker at first. At first, I wanted to be an actor and a rapper, but motivational speaking is just something that escalated to. Now, I know people go, come on, man, you're 11 years old. You're going you're gonna to preach to me. You're going to tell... How do you react to people who say that you're too young to do this, which is ridiculous? Well, how I react to that is I go on stage, I speak, I get off the stage and I look at their faces and I see them blown away. All right, and, all right. Uh, all right, well, let's, let's see you blow away some people here. We've got some young people your age. How you doing? Uh, and there's some issues that they're going through. And we're going to start 
with uh, we have bullying and we have confidence. And so, Lauren, what is your question for King Nam? What inspirational messages do you have for kids to help build their self-esteem and confidence? Well, that is a great question, Lauren. So I'm just going to give you a little scenario. Think about when you're building a Lego tower or a sand castle, and it's perfect. It's right where you want it. It's tall. It's amazing. And your little brother comes in, and he knocks over your Lego tower. Or your friends come to the beach, and they make a mistake and run over your sand castle. Now, you're not going to let your sand castle sh be shattered all over the floor, are you? No, the only way that you can get it back is if you build it back up again. So think about it like that, but with your confidence. When people try to knock your confidence down, when people try to break you, you have to build your confidence up every morning by waking up and looking in the mirror and telling yourself, I am great, I am powerful, I am strong. Anything that motivates you and anything that gets you going. All right. I saw, not only you, Warren. Some adults over here shaking yeah. their heads as well. Bullying is also uh, an issue that a lot of people, especially young people, are dealing with. Brooks, you have a que you have a question? Um, what do you think a person should do to show love and positivity towards someone who's trying to bully or tease them? Well, what I would say to that is try to communicate with that person because attitudes are evidence of misery. And what that means is when a person is getting abused at home, when a person is getting yelled at, they go to a school and they look forward to picking on a younger person. So that's why you have to communicate with them and talk to them. And sometimes another thing, try to help them when they're struggling with the subject in class because then you can become friends and then you can convince them to stop bullying. I've done it multiple times. How does this come to you? I mean, how have you, where, where does this, these, these life lessons, I mean, who, who has motivated you? How, how, how's this happened? Uh, I was going to point to my father, but he doesn't like being on TV, so. <laughs> but my father, he, he, he was always my motivation. Mm -hmm. He always drive me. Every time I thought about giving up, every time I thought about quitting, he was right there for me. And I love it because we were going to have him on and his dad said, no, this is his son's moment. He didn't want it, so don't put the camera on him. Don't put the camera on him. He doesn't want the camera on him. Way to go, Dad. All right. Now, you motivated the young ones. How about us old folks, the old ones? What, what can you say on this Monday? Give us a little Monday motivation. The big Monday. This is a day that a lot of adults complain about. But I want to tell all of you beautiful people this. Now think about your Monday like a basket. And let's just say you only put greasy food in this basket, like fried chicken, and barbecue wings. I don't eat beef or pork. I'm just saying mm, to, give, <laughs> to give energy to the crowd. But now, since it's only greasy food in that basket, how do you expect to reach down in that basket and pull out an apple or a banana? Like, you know, something healthy for you. So think about your day the same way. If you only put negative thoughts into your day, then how do you expect to have a positive day? What you have to do is you have to put positive thoughts in your day. Be positive, be happy, and then I guarantee you, you will have the best Monday that you ever had in your entire life. This is a very good Monday. Proud of you. At just 14, Marci Martin is quite the businesswoman. The starlet has just signed a first look deal with Universal Pictures. She became the youngest person to ever executive produce a studio film with her upcoming flick, Little. My name is Josh, I'm 13 years old, and I started my foundation because I saw there was a major need in the community to help out. So one day I was going to church, and I was four and a half, and we stopped at a red light. I saw a homeless man, and I saw on the sign it said, need food. In America, kids aren't shown that people out there are hungry. It was really revealing to me that people out there need help. Every day you'd be asked, mom, can we do something to help? I want to make a difference. A lot of times the parents or the adults don't listen. We think, oh, they don't know what they're talking about or they're not serious, but he was persistent. So I said, okay, we will do something. I looked for a foundation that was able to let kids help other kids, and there was none at the time. We started helping a few families at my mom's church with food for a little bit, and then because there were so many people in need, we started the charity. So when I started my foundation um, when I was seven, I made sure that my priority was to get kids to help kids. First, it started out with my family and some close friends helping out. And eventually, my friends told their friends, and those friends told their friends, and it just expanded really quickly. So we have over 1,200 volunteers, and half of them are youth volunteers. So if we could all my foundation is run by kids, and the Junior Advisory Board helps me do that. Yeah, good idea. They plan events and fulfill those events. 
When I first met Joshua, the immediate spark was recognizing how young he was. And what was really amazing to me is that he had, at the age of 11, many, many years of experience building his foundation. He was well organized. He had an army of not just adults that wanted to help and join forces with him, but he mobilized youth. This is my warehouse where we give and package food to those who are in need. We have weekly small distributions and we also have a backpack program where we help kids get food for over the weekend who are usually on a lunch program. Joshua Hart gives us two bags of food every month. It would be kind of hard to try to get what I basically needed for my son. I'd be lost, really. Well, I think we can talk about how to get some fundraising. This is a nutritious breakfast, which has milk, cereal, and fresh fruit. Not every kid has access to this. My foundation is trying to change that. Food pantries and food banks are in great need of getting milk. And if they don't have it and they're not able to give it out, many kids are missing out on this essential part of their food diet. A child's entire day is contingent upon how it starts. And I think it's absolutely critical for them to start off with a healthy and nutritious meal. Children can't be successful and can't learn unless we provide their basic needs. My experience with Joshua's Heart has changed my life forever. I found my purpose in life and my passion in life, which is to help those who are in need. There's an easy way to help those in your own community. Visit milklife.com give to learn how to get nutrient-rich milk to those in need.